Howdy ho guys, and welcome back to another Bojanian Plays playthrough of Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action. This game is gorgeous, it's got amazing narrative, it's very relevant, very clever, very intelligent. Um, clever and intelligent mean the same thing, I don't know why I said them both. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm enjoying this game so far. Um, and uh, yeah, last time we uh, spoke with... Uh, oh god, who do we speak with? This is terrible, memory is failing me today. Um, we spoke, we saw Jamie again, you know. Um, Jamie's awesome, I like, ja I like Jamie. Um, oh yeah, we met um, the, the lesbian. And, uh, and like, I feel a bit cringy when I say that word because I don't know if it's offensive, but like... Um, but I guess that's what you say, you know. It's like if, if someone was gay, you'd, you'd say, you know, he's gay. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily derogatory, it's just like, just that's what they are, you know. If there's a word that people like to prefer to use, I would use that word, but like... So, if I offended anyone, if I offended anyone by saying this, you know, like, I don't, I apologize, I don't mean it, it's just... Sometimes I just run my mouth, I guess. Um, but regardless, it's not, it's not intentional, you know. Um, yeah, we, we spoke with her, and uh, her kind of like, weird... Um, Gimp robot guy, um, deal, deal or no deal, um, and uh, they're an interesting pair. Um, but yeah, and that's what happened last time. And uh, also, the um, there was a bank robbery, um, and uh, from a few episodes ago, um, when we spoke with Say, um, she kind of she went there. So hopefully, nothing bad's happened to her. Um, and also, previously uh, in a previous episode. Um, Oh, shit, I forgot her name. The the, the cat girl. <laughs> um, she she ran off. So hopefully, because when she when she heard the news, right. So hopefully she's okay. Because I'm starting to get attached to these characters, and I don't want anything bad to happen to them. So cool. Um, so now now let's um, with that said, let's kind of move on and see what is awaiting us in our next day of work. Saturday, the seventeenth of December. Evening. Huh? I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink, I guess. <sighs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. No. I wonder if any bar is used in pen enclosure as a means of getting their employees to work. I don't see why not. Seems like the total, the total opposite would happen. Yeah. <laughs> not to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What did you say? Nothing important. You know, I'm just pouring my heart out to you, boss. Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. Say, what's this bottle? The client gave it to me yesterday. Gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. Can I stick my pinky in it? <laughs> it's, it's some sort of rum. Mm. Rum? Nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Um, yeah, sure. Wow, we get to serve boss a bit. Oh, this is cool. Like, I've, I've been wanting to talk with boss. Um, have, have some one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one because, you know, we're, we're supposed to be close, right? Let's get, let's get her some rum. Bottled drinks. Ooh. Grandpa booze. And drag it to shaker before mixing. Cool. Seems a bit seems a bit kind of a bit of an extra step. Can't we just pour it into a glass with some ice on it or something? Here. All right. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office. Thanks. Anytime. Okay then. Time to serve drinks and change lives. It's a little catchphrase. Uh, where are we? Neon district. Uh, nightmare maneuvers. So, yeah, we're here. Let's work our way backwards again. And then next time I think we'll, we'll, we'll start from forwards, or we'll do some other pattern. Cause, uh, yeah. I still haven't managed to listen to all the songs, but like, maybe at some point I will. Um, okay. Yep. Just what I said. Wait, that's not how it goes. Wait, what did she say? No one here to retort. Well, that's boring. Ah, uh, it feels lonely without Gil here. 
I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. Good evening. <laughs> Holy shit, that was a record board <laughs> record breaking of jinx. Oh shit, it's a brain. Uh oh. Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you, Mr. Brain? What voice do I give this thing? I'll have a blue fairy. I don't even know. Maybe I should just shouldn't give him a voice. <laughs> I don't know, because I've already given the robot voice, so I can't use the robot voice. Um, oh, if only I could do like a proper robot voice. You know, like like that, that kind of like Steve Hawkins kind of voice. I love it too. I love it too. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um. Hmm. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. I don't. I didn't, I didn't get that joke. Um. Let's give this brain a, a blue fairy. I don't get it. Um. Blue fairy. Four aldehyde. One planet guide. Optional commentary. Yeah, let's get the brain trunk, shall we? Take that, Mr. Brain. Hope you like it strong. Uh, I'll just pour it. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just like open your little kind of thing and pour it in. <laughs> Sweet golly and soft. Okay, let's do this. All aged and mixed. Here you go. No, maybe I should do that actually. No, yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> it's gonna be weird. So, uh, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. With what? You can drink stuff? Um, oh, I have the same systems Lillian do. Can I ask you something, um, uh, mi miss? Call me Taylor, just Taylor. And yes, it seems like you can ask me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. This is gonna look weird on the camera as well, but oh well. Nah, too easy. You are a brain in a jar, right? And so not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. I hope this turns out okay. This 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 might be terrible. So how why What? Does my handsomeness make you speechless? Now that's something a girl sees every day. And it's quite saying quite a bit in these parts. Do not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are the brains living conditions that allow us to exist in any other humanoid creature. Maybe I can do this actually. All while Yeah, that's better. All while computers and our jobs grand for our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not out of ask aspiration or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful pre prepared. <laughs> it looks so weird. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. Uh, what brings you to one of the world's five? What brings one of the world's five brains in the jar to this place, then? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in uh, quite a bit of time. Have you ever come here before? Come on, if, are you sure? Are, are you serious? Like you? <laughs> Sadly, no. Otherwise, I remember a cute face like yours. Oh my god! I'm getting hit on a private brain. Speaking of which, can I have your name? He's turning American, so <laughs> um, it's Jill. Jill, that's a really cute name. Thank you. Um, say, weren't you scared of going outside today with all the commotion around and all? It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous views to stop me. You're awfully energetic, did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that uh, I figured a brain and jaw wouldn't be so happy. When I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I could ever... Uh, Plus, I'm doing something that will help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? Hmm, I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright, then yeah, I'll make you... Uh, <laughs> uh, 
one beer to make Taylor happy. Is it? It's a woman, right? Because she, she, uh, my mind is so far gone right now. Uh, one aldehyde, two of these. I should know this already. I should know this already. Shame on me. Ah, uh, here, have a beer. Oh yes. I, actually, I can probably just do it without. No matter what it. No matter what it takes, beer is always good. Hey Taylor, may I ask you something a bit indiscreet? You can ask anything you want, honey. Well, you had your other body. Were you male or female? Okay, here's answering the question. Um, that's actually quite a question, because I don't remember. Especially considering I don't really know the answer either. You don't? I mean, I remember my name was Taylor. In fact, I remember every detail of my life, but that's the one thing that's a bit blurry. Blurry? Yeah, the team that put me here said that, that it might be a side effect of the whole process. But my family and friends say that even in life, I didn't put too much thought into questions about gender. So in the end, we're back to square one. Oh, this is interesting. Wait, don't you have pics or anything else? To be honest, I've chosen to not look too deeply into my old identity. Probably because I'm happier in this ambiguous state. But also because I have this gut feeling I'm not psychologically prepared to see what I looked like. I don't know. I feel like if I do, I might crumble. Damn. Just out of curiosity, in a third person scenario, how should one refer to you? By my name. I guess that makes sense, but what about if I need to use a pronoun? If you absolutely need to use pronouns, okay, there we go, refer to me like you'd refer to any other house appliance. Like a TV or anything like that, an it. You okay with that? I mean, you could probably invent a better word than that, because it just sounds. I don't know, like. It just sounds like it, it's, it's degrading, right? In the end, even if I can speak, I'm just an object. Oh, don't... Really? That's how you view yourself? That's actually something I internalized a long time ago, even by... Oh, okay. Oh, that's sad. That's a sad backstory. I see. If that doesn't make you comfortable, feel free to use neutral pronouns. To be honest, you can refer to me or her however you want. I don't really pay mind to that. It's just language at the end of the day. But this isn't about what makes me comfortable. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a down, <laughs> if you want to count that, Jill got a bit, tr a bit uh, frisky there. Yeah. If you want to drink alcohol from taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. True statement of fact. Why though, Lindem can get dr can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in that case, their brains are a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Hmm, yeah you're right. Who's this? Oh Alma! Just oh Alma! I forgot her voice. It's a British one. Where's the courtesy one would expect from a plebeian bar staff? Something like that. Although I have to be careful not to mix it with Say's voice. Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you? Crazy bitch. <laughs> Happy. Not when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. Oh god, this is gonna be fun. Whoa! You hurt my feelings with that, darling. Sorry, you don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lillian Maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you, babe. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Oh, what was her voice? I can't remember. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. I think her voice was more of posh as well. Hmm. Oh, I know just what to strive for, then. Just kidding. It made me happy to make you happy to buy a new drink. Does that bother you? I'm not trying to get in your pants or anything, it's not like I can. I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, something like that. Awesome, I'll put for the next drink then. Or you have. <laughs> I have a po cobalt spell bit. Kel Why was I holding my- I'm getting- Ah! So many voices! Hey! And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're going to, get me to have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay then. Cobalt Velvet, straight from Taylor to Alma. Ah. Uh, cobalt Velvet, the the most badass sounding drink in this game. 
Um, okay, just myself here. Hmm. A drink. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me in those past few, past past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about only about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Ah, <sighs> feels like it's been longer. Shut up. Shut up. You love me and you know it. So you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy speaking of which, where's Pablo? Gillian. Arch Archimedes. <laughs> Dunno, adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time he came here, nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving and I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry, you know, like, we click. We click, she says. Oh, brother. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than with many other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late and I've got to go- Ah, I was just beginning to enjoy voicing you. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. That Taylor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of the five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I've actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five sis... Sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have the names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. Sure, the eldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A. Don't think about too much about it. I never said the offer reflected the order reflected our ages. My sister Carlotta is the, el the eldest one. Then there's Diana, just before me. Then comes Eva. At the bottom lies Bella. I'm <clears throat> sorry. The youngest one is Bernardo. You've never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the way, Evita and Bernie were born. Diana and Cl Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. So you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left a kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't even think about when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she'd only known for like three months. She would take her own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who just caught my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blamed the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced me to. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times and he invited me out to a basketball game. The mood was nice but then later the kiss cam focused on us and instead of kissing me he proposed. I also got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you re rejected him then, in a stadium, on a fucking kiss cam. We went out for like three weeks. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to get my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know. Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex, yeah. Bit, a bit desperate. And a, yeah, a bit convoluted. Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you on you in in their bed. True, but then don't never never kind of never underestimate your own kind of penchant for attracting these men because like you know it could always bite you in the ass in the end, I guess. So what I'm basically saying is, you know, like if you're a girl and you see guys as dogs and stuff, it's like, well, yeah, guys might be dogs, but then like if you're if you're putting so much focus on the fact that they're dogs and perhaps when those dogs stop wanting you know when when they kind of you know what i'm saying when, when you know when they stop becoming dogs you're like oh well i thought guys were dogs and then like they leave you alone suddenly and it's like you place so much faith in like 
them being attracted to you. Anyway, I'm kind of a bit, I'm kind of ranting a bit. It's weird. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I think I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm, what's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? Good enough service, I'm guessing. G k k huh, interesting name. What does it mean? Kachike? 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 Kachike is the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you want, us, want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I'll pass. I don't have too many good memories when rum's involved. Give me a fringe weaver instead, will you? Alright. Fringe weaver! Um. Fringe weaver! All aged and mixed. There we go. There's a hair in my face. One fringe weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? That's so bad. Nothing you need to worry about. Oh, come on, girl. You're always digging at me for information. Why won't you tell me something about yourself? Okay. Let her off a bit easy there, Jill. All right, now it's... No, it's not your turn to ask questions. Answer my question first. About what? What kind of family is your family? Hmm. I don't think I want to answer. I'm an only child. My mum and dad split amicably. 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 My mum is a violinist. Ooh, so she was always away from home with orchestra. So you kind of have a bit in common with her. Uh, I guess that's maybe why Chill has uh, a bit of a respect for uh, Kirimika. I spent most of the time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I said my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh. Didn't you get something like your mum's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. Hey! Oh my god, that's, that's like almost the same with me, except like I kind of carried it on a bit more into university I joined like my university orchestra but then I was like it just fizzled out I preferred piano to be honest what made you stop? I don't know I just kind of said that's it one day and it stopped you know got a bit lazy with it you know just didn't see the point <laughs> I guess you know in my case as well but what about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them actually mainly because my dad moved away from most of them most of my mom's family lived in France France to boot? I don't say France. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? Mon air glisseur est plein d'anguille. Guille. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? My French isn't good enough. Despite having given like Kirimiki a French thingy. Ew, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know. I can't speak French. I did try though, but college started and I stopped talking, taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mum's side that lives close by, but you'll be hard pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know. All of my mum's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the primer of my family. Nothing too interesting is happening. Sorry to disappoint you. Your mum's a French violinist and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixo mixologist. <laughs> Please don't ever. Sounds like someone, someone, something somebody would say to make a bartender sound sophisticated. <laughs> Ugh. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of the systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City or anything else in the world, they need security, I'm their woman. We've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info, like some sort of mur- uh. I'm reading these lines too fast, so like I'm getting my inflections all like weird. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. It makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Can you tell me once you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? Procured, I think it's said. A mostly honest job, sheesh. What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey, you know, a bit too easy. So when I started college, I took a course on system security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved with breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always involving. The point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I helped make harder at that. 
Huh, I didn't think about it that way. It is less action -y than what movies make it out to be, though. No real time. No real time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Do you have anything else? I <laughs> cut her off there a bit abruptly. Um, I have a classy drink. Any classy drink. Here goes nothing. Classy drink, eh? Will you come to the right place, Missy? Uh, classy drink. Classic. Classy. Well, she does like her Brantini, so let's give her a Mercury Blast. Um, because she hasn't had one before. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. All on the rock, splendid. No thermometer was on the creation of this drink. Because everyone's... I've broken one before, and like, everyone says that like, mercury is, is really toxic for you, but it's only like in certain like, doses, dosages, and like every time you break one, it like, kind of like, if you ever break in like a mercury thermometer, like, because, you know, I've done one in, in, in like, chemistry labs, and it's like, it just breaks into these little like, balls on the ground, it's, it's fucking terrifying, because you're like, ah, I'm gonna get poisoned, but, anyway, here you are. Yep, just what I needed, thanks. Say, Jill, what's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? Well, people have the right to not give me money. If they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. Bonus. No bonus means less money and no tips, which doesn't help because I have to pay bills. Oh, I see. Do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? No. You have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. I'm quite a minimalist. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know. If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We could be roommates, that'd be so cool. Don't know. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. Having to move my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cats are shut in. They, get very, they got very upset one time when I moved some furniture around. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them, you know. I was only joking. Not that I wanted you to move in with me. Not that I'm lonely or anything. Yeah, I don't. But I thought about it before. Now... I need some air. I'm going to take my break. You want to come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should invite me to dinner first. I'm not that easy a girl I'll let you have, you know. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken away from my break, so shut up and come with me. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking a break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. Ah, break with... I'm starting to like her. Both, like, because I'm getting used to the accent, and also, I, I just like her. I, I'm getting to like her. I'm getting to like all these characters and I know something bad's gonna happen because this is the type of game where like they're gonna destroy your heart and I love that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're taking a break and I'm gonna end it here so I'm enjoying this conversation uh, we're having um, and uh, yeah and we'll continue it next time. So I hope you guys are enjoying this and I'll catch you in the next part. Peace out guys.